Hi, my mind. Welcome back to another video in a series of converting our patio to a three season multi purpose room. I apologize for the noise, it is raining right now. But it feels like we're always raining when we're doing videos, so I guess we'll bear for it. We'll, we'll bear with it for now. In our last video, we talked about laying down the sheeting in order to create an air pocket when we install insulation under our deck floor. And that is going to be an interesting uh, project when we uh, start on it, but the first thing we need to do before we install the insulation is we need to install blocks. These are blocks right here, and blocks go in between the joists of a floor for a few reasons. The first reason is because the joists of a, of a deck or a floor, they often work. So, I mean, just right now, you can actually make the, uh, the joists warp a bit and bend a bit. Like this one right here, I'm going to you can make it, you can see how much it can, I can bend it with just my legs. And naturally it warps by itself. So in order to make sure that they stay rigid and straight, the purpose of blocks is to secure them and make sure that they don't move. The second reason for a block is to, is to make it a bit more stronger. You know, just, just like the way that joists give uh, the floor strength, Blocks also give strength to the floor in the same way. Although it's a bit less because they don't take up as much space. And the way that it works, basically it's like making the entire joist like one unit. It's making them all connected to each other rather than just separate joists that each have to take on a bit of, uh, a bit of load. In other words, basically we're making this entire floor connected. If it wasn't connected by blocks, each of these joists would have to handle force like individually. It's kind of hard to explain, but you get the idea. The final reason is actually a bit unique to us. Usually when you put blocks, you're supposed to stagger them. And what I mean by this is, usually you're supposed to stagger them so they look a bit like this. And then, you want to stagger them so that they look a bit like this. And the reason why is because in order to secure blocks, usually you just screw them in from the outside on each of the joists. However, in our case, we want to use these blocks as sort of guides or like the edges of our plywood. When we put the plywood down, it's gonna go exactly from the edge to the side to the center of these blocks. And when we screw in the blocks, when we screw in the, the plywood uh, sheathing, we wanna make sure that the screws go in and go into the blocks. So we're placing all of these blocks in the same line in order to ensure that we can screw them in, uh, screw the plywood sheathing into the blocks. The and just to repeat, the reason that we're not staggering them is so that they're all in the same line. Usually people stagger them, but in our case, we're not staggering them. My dad also wanted me to mention that if we're installing the sheathing the normal way, what I mean by this is usually when you install plywood sheathing, you install it so that some of the uh, some of the sheets are the long way and some of them are the other way when you're putting it. So basically, if this was going this way, the next sheet uh, the next sheathing of plywood would go the other way. Usually, when you build a room, you do it like that. But the way that we're building this is we're building it so that all of them are in the same orientation. They're all going to be in the long way, uh, in the same orientation that the room is, I guess. And the reason, I guess it's also helped by the fact that this is actually sort of two separate decks. This right here is a separate deck than this deck, and they just happen to be connected. So you can actually see that we've traced out lines for where the blocks are going to go for each of the sheathings. So our, our situation has a bit of unique circumstances that make us want to choose this orientation of blocks. We want to make sure that they're all in the same line. You'll see in the next video what, exactly what I'm talking about when you lay down the sheathing. Actually, in the next video, we're going to do the, the, the insulation, and then we're going to do the sheathing. But you'll see in the next few videos what I'm talking about. This video is going to be about the blocks, and I guess the, the main thing about our video is like how are you supposed to install them? If they're all supposed to be in the same axis, and they're all supposed to be you know not higher than the, uh, the joists are, they can be lower, how are you supposed to install them? And that was the challenge that my dad gave to me today. Um, unfortunately, he already gave me hints for it. So, <laughs> uh, it's not going to be as, um, 
as much of a trial and tribulations as I wanted, but at least I have some idea of how we're going to install this. So, like I said, we want to make sure that these are all in a straight line, that they're all flush with the joists, and that they're all in, that they're all straight. We already have the pencil marks for where the uh, blocks are supposed to go. And I already showed you that we can actually bend the joists a bit in order to fit them in. So what this is important because sometimes it might be extremely hard to actually fit this into place. So in order to make sure that we can fit it into place, we just expand the joists ourselves. All right, so let's get into it. So first thing we need to make sure is how are we gonna secure it? If they're all in a straight line, I mean, if you stagger the blocks like this, what you can do is you can just uh, secure them from the outside of each joist. But if they're all in a straight line, how are you going to secure them? You can't do it like, uh, like, like, if we, if we nailed it in here, how are we going to nail in this one if it's in a straight line? So if you take a look on the other uh, blocks like I did, you'll notice that there are screws screwed in diagonally. That's really the key of the whole process. We want to install the screws diagonally so that they, we can keep the wood in a straight line. All right, so that's the problem securing it down. How do we make sure it's flush? The next step for that, next, I guess the solution for that problem I'm gonna show you. And the, the, the reason I'm doing this video is that in case anyone else has this kind of like idea and process, they can take some inspiration from what I'm doing. But to make sure that this block is flush with these uh, joists, what we can do is we can take another block, like we've done with the, um, the joist hangers, we can take another block and use it as a guide for this block to make sure that's flush. So in order to do that, we already have this uh, joist in the middle here. The reason that we put this uh, block here first is the reason is because this section is the tightest section. We want to make sure that we put the blocks in the tightest section first, and then we can take the, lo the looser ones, and they're going to be a bit easier towards the end. By the way, the middle ones, these middle uh, blocks, are 14 and a half inches long. The one on this side is. 13 inches long, and the one, on, no, 13 and a half, that one's 14 inches long. Just information for your knowledge, but what I'm going to do here is we're going to screw this in. And we're going to to push up this block to make sure that it's flush with the rest of the joists. And then we're going to drill it in to secure it. The added benefit of doing the middle ones first is that you can actually, you don't have to screw them in diagonally. These ones, because they don't have anything on the outside, you can just screw them in the normal way. We're going to need only one screw for each side. two on each side, uh, not one, like I said before. And you know, just for added strength, we're gonna do two from two inches from the top and from the bottom. I don't really have a good sense of how straight this is. I'm gonna, okay, hope. Okay, now for one on each side. Originally I put it thinking there was going to be one screw per side. So this one's a bit more centered, but the other one is a bit more space. You can see this one's much more closer to the center, but that's okay.
That was battery. All right, but after that, we're going to make this uh, flush because we want to make sure that they're all flush because when we put the next ones, they're, the next ones have to be able to fit in. So we have to make sure that these ones are flush right now. But I'm going to recharge this and then we'll get back to it. Okay, so what about this one? This one, this block is too wide for this space. In order to make sure that it's the right width, we're going to use clamps. So I'd say the best strategy for this is first we're going to bind this out enough. Then we're going to place our block in between. And then we're going to clamp it in. Hold on. And then we're going to keep tightening the clamp as the block is held in place until we get to about the amount that we want. Then we're going to put in our guide and that's going to help us keep that space in place. Now I gotta knock it in place just to make sure. All right, so I made sure this is straight, uh, straight with the lines on the sides of the joists. We're going to put the guide on the top. I just need to make sure a screw gets in here. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but. Now we can secure it from each side. We're going to use two screws. This one's a bit darker because it's not closer to the light, but you get the gist of what I'm doing. Completely flush. Alright, so now we've got to the box in the middle. This one's actually different than these ones because we have to diagonally screw it in. So, in order to do that, we're going to do the same procedure as we did before. If it's too tight, we need to widen it with our legs. If it's too wide, then we need to use a clamp. In our case, we're going to need to widen this with our legs. Now, we also have to keep in mind the locations of the screws before, because when you secure these ones, we also don't want to uh, collide with them. So, this one's about two inches from the top, two inches from the bottom, two inches from, two and a half inches from the top, two inches from, two, two inches from the top, and then two half inches from the bottom. So we're going to keep that in mind. And in order to get these in, well, first, let's think about actually driving a screw in diagonally. If we just try to screw it in just like this, if we try to screw it in just like this, you know, no, no hole before. If we try to do it like this, oh, look, it's a bit harder. We're not actually cutting, we're not driving into the wood, we're just going forward. So in order to make sure that we're driving into the wood, that's actually screwing in, we're going to drill a pilot hole. Or I guess it's not really a pilot hole, but you get the idea. We need to make like a, a little cut in right here, 
Hold on. I guess hold on. It's better to do this here. We're going to drill a hole from the top. Not too much, but just enough so that when you screw it in from the side, it actually has something to grab onto. You know, before if you do it like this, it's not really going to be able to grab onto anything. But if you do it here, that's going to be able to grab onto something. Hold on, this is crooked. And there we go. That's how you screw in something diagonally. And you want to make sure that if you screw it in diagonally, that screws in at the right angle. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't go in too, uh, too low so that it goes through the other side. You also want to make sure that it's close enough to the edge that it actually protrudes and secures on the edge. So in this case, um, I think it was a bit too far from the edge. So we're going to go a bit closer and we're also going to make sure that it's not close to the other screws. Yeah, make sure the angle is just right. You want to go so that it's too it's steep enough to penetrate into the wood and not uh but not uh you know like too straight and you also don't want to go too far away so that it goes out the other side but if you don't have a screw that's long enough i mean just use a longer screw i mean if you're not using a screw that's long enough then just get another one i mean if you don't have this then you kind of need to decrease the space but if you already have the hole dri uh, drilled just use a longer screw so in our case we're going to use these three inch ones let's put this back on so we don't have to be too exact about this. I see. Now it's not keeping, being kept in by the side joints. So hold on, like this then, all right? Oh, okay. So at the end of it, it just, the wood was pulled up. I'm going to do another one on this side. So we just put these two screws down so that we can secure the uh, blocks as we screwed them in. Uh, and you don't have to do this step. You could have done it like my dad and my mom did over there. Um, but if you take like really long to do this, like in any other job, then whoever is paying you would have to pay you a lot of money for uh, time and labor. So we're going to try to find the most efficient method. And that's doing... I guess we're going to try to find the most safest method in our case because I'm a, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. It's not really the fastest method, but it is the most uh, safe method. So now we're going to go over here. We're going to screw it in diagonally. And we already have the pilot hole driven. But I think this is kind of in line with the previous screw, so we're going to make it a bit deep, deeper. Probably here. So first we want to make one that's perpendicular to the side of the joist. And then we want to take out that hole, I mean that screw. So I use that screw as our way to dig into the wood. Okay. It's going to be a bit difficult, but 
Oh, you see what I, that happened that? I mean, you see what happened just there? If you don't, if you're not able to dig into the wood, the screw is just going to pop out. So, got to be really careful about this. All right, I think I figured out the possible way to do this. Let's give it a try. I'm, I think I'm going to screw it in here and then just try, try to twist it to where I need to get it to go. Maybe pull it out a bit. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to screw it in. Now it looks like it's a pretty decent method. Look at that. We have a hole driven diagonally to secure a block that's perpendicular to another block. I'm not gonna lie, that was actually one of the first times, or I think the first time in my life that I've driven a uh, diagonal screw. So we're going to do it on this side. And my dad said that we're going to do one on this side, one on the other side, and we're going to do two on this side on the opposite sides. All right, so my dad was telling me this is a bit too uh, perpendicular. We wanna go for about this angle. You know, it goes almost close to the edge, but not entirely, and that's all right. So we're going to do some here. I think the screw is about here, so we're going to go down here. Okay. Okay, we're gonna pull it out a bit more. And I think just a bit more. I think right here. That's a good angle. Yeah, it's not protruding on the other side. I'm going to drive it in far enough so that it doesn't protrude out. This one right here, you can see it protrudes out a little bit. And, uh, well, I, I think the only solution to that is just to dri drive it in further or to make a new hole, but that's a bit too much work. see now it's not protruding out this one's a bit harder because as i go in deeper the drill ends up hitting the side of the block so you don't want, you want to make sure it's not too um vertical and that's what i was saying earlier you want to make sure it's not too um straight because it's going to be harder to screw in and also because then it's not going to be uh then it's going to be protruding but in our case you can see that we have a diagonal screw on here and a diagonal screw on here next step is to put diagonal screws on the back side on the bottom yeah, so that was very tough, but it was a very great learning experience. I really like, and I don't really need to do any more work because I'm pretty sure I showed you all that needs to be said about the block. And I don't really need to repeat what's already been said. The reason I really like doing these kinds of things while my dad is learning how to build this sort of patio room is because while he's building these, he likes to give me these sorts of challenges. Like, what do you do when you need to make the blocks all straight with each other, flush the surface, and um, you have to do it to make sure that the the joists stay not work. How do you make sure? How do you put it in between things that are too tight or things that are too wide? And he gives he gives me these challenges, and I think it's cool because it gives me the chance to think outside the box, and also think of ways or learn new ways to do things. Like, like uh, for example, screwing in um, a block from the top is beneficial because it allows that block to be pulled up as you're screwing in the screw. You know, before I would have thought that if you continued drilling this screw, it would just go in deeper and it wouldn't help the block. But by doing this, by drilling this screw in, you end up actually pulling this block up and that allows you to keep it flush. And you'll see what I mean when I take out You see what I mean when I take out this screw. As you saw, I also just learned that when you're taking out one solitary screw, the entire piece might hit you in the leg. And if you look at this right here, you'll see that it's actually not flush with the surface of the block and the joist. So uh, 
when I'm doing this in the future, I need to make sure that they're flush by, you know, pulling the block up with the screw. So I learned something new today. I learned a lot of new things today. And in our next few videos, we're going to be installing insulation. We're going to be installing the plywood sheathing. And if, with that video, you can see what I mean when we're installing this lengthwise and why we're installing the blocks like this. And then after that, we're going to be uh, doing more stuff on the floor. But for now, this video was quite a lot of rambling and quite a lot of learning. And it's almost dark right now. So uh, I guess I can close it now. I'm Ayman, and thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and look at videos on I'm Ayman, especially the videos on the three season, the patio to three season sunroom conversion. And I'll see you in those videos. But for now, I am heckin' tired. So I'll see you in the next one. I'm Ayman, that's Irelia, and signing out. Peace.